the contextual taskbar inside Illustrator has some great functionality, such as recoloring artwork, repeating objects, tracing and masking an image, and more. Welcome everyone, I'm your host, Elias Antopoulos. The first example is the radio repeats. So inside the layers panel, I'll target the layer. And the first choice coming from the contextual taskbar is to recolor the objects. So I'll click on that. Here, for example, I can change both of this color at the same time. Or I can break the chain icon and then color those separately to one another. I can also double click on a color stop, change the color to color one choice. Here, for example, I can change the color order. Or here, for example, I can adjust the brightness. So many different choices here. I'm just going to reset that. And then once again, target the layer. The second choice coming from the context of taskbar is to group. Here's the group or ungroup those two shapes. The third choice is to repeat objects. And the first choice is the radio repeats. And now the selected artwork is repeated around a circle. By default, eight instances are repeated. And to change the repeat instance count, I'll click on the side widget upwards and that will increase the number of instances or downwards to reduce it. I can drag the white circular widget to change the spacing between objects and determine how close or far apart the objects are to one another, thereby changing the whole artwork. I can drag the splinter on the circle and that removes some instances, keeping the repeated artwork unchanged. To scale the repeated objects, I'll drag one of the corners of the bounding box and scale it proportionally. Another cool thing to do is to edit the shape itself, which is going to alter the entire repeated object. So I'll go ahead and double click end of the artwork on the circle. And that puts me into the isolation mode, radio repeats. So for example, here I can just scale it down both of these paths or rotate. I can also target a specific path here. For example, I can target this one here and then edit the path. And immediately Adobe Illustrator goes ahead and grabs the direct selection tool. So for example, I can click on this anchor point and inside the control bar, for example, I can convert the anchor point to your corner point. I'll do the same for the second path here. Select this anchor point and convert that to a corner point. I can also add more shapes to the existing artwork that repeats itself. So for example, I grab the ellipse tool. And for example, right here, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to create a circle from the center. I'll release that. And inside my swatches panel, I'm just going to assign a color one choice. And now I have a brand new artwork repeating itself, which is very powerful. To exit, all I have to do is just click back on the back one level icon twice. For the next example, I have Meandros, the Greek pattern, which I can repeat in an array in just one click. So I'll go ahead and target the layer inside the layers panel. And the first choice coming from the contextual taskbar is to edit the path. Once again, Illustrator switches to the direct selection tool. So in this case, for example, I can just click on this anchor point and then click and drag to the right or click and drag this anchor point upwards or this one downwards. As you can see, now I have 
an entirely different shape. I will undo that, grab the selection tool, and the second choice coming from the contextual taskbar is to repeat objects, and this time around I'll choose the grid repeat. And now I have an array of repeating patterns. Dragging the handle at the bottom adds more rows, and dragging the handle to the right adds more columns. To size the grid repeat, I'll grab one of these corners of the bottom box and scale this proportionally. Dragging the horizontal slider or the vertical slider, that increases or decreases the spacing in the grid. For additional options, you can also look inside the Properties panel. With the mirror option, I can create the first half of a symmetrical artwork and Illustrator will automatically create the other half for me. So in this case, I have a heart shape. I'll grab the pen tool and click and drag to create two smooth points for the first half of the heart shape. I'll release that. I'll grab the selection tool and the first choice coming from the contextual taskbar is to edit the path. No need for that, I just created one. The second choice is to repeat objects, so, so in this case I'll choose the mirror repeat. And now Illustrator automatically created the other half of the heart shape for me. Dragging the handles below or above can rotate or transform the mirror part. To control the spacing between the two artworks, I'll drag the symmetrical axis between those two shapes. When finished, I can double click and both halves of the artwork are grouped together and move as a single object. To edit those paths again, all I have to do is just double click on the artwork. Using type, the contextual taskbar gives us some great options, so let's see how that works. I'll grab the type tool and just click once to add point type. I'll click at the very end, press the spacebar and add some more characters. So the more characters I add, the more the horizontal line expands since this is point type. I'll go ahead and position the taskbar right here on the top. And for example here, I can set the font family. So I'm just going to do a search for Montserrat. It's a great font from Google Fonts. I'll set mine to Montserrat Medium. Here I can set the font size, perhaps to 18 points. And here's another choice to convert the text to outlines, which will convert the text to editable paths. So I'll click on that. I'm going to zoom quite a bit here. And looking inside the layers panel, here's the group where all of these compound paths. So I will select the whole group and then ungroup that. I'll target this compound shape and then using the keyboard shortcuts, I'll scale this up. Perhaps I can grab the direct selection tool, click to select this anchor point. I'll bring this up, this one to the side and this one at the bottom. And now I have edited this compound shape. All right, I will select everything and press the delete key or the backspace on the keyboard. I'll grab the tab tool and then click and drag to create an area type. And now the type fills the boundaries of that shape. So in this case, I'm just going to set the font size to 12 points, and then under the top menu, I'll fill the rest with placeholder text. Now I can convert this area type to point type. I'll do that, 
And once again, since this point type, I can double click to get into the paragraph and continue typing and add more characters. And the more characters I add, the horizontal line keeps expanding. Now I can convert this point type back to area type. And then under the tab menu, I'll fill this with placeholder text. There are some more options here, so I'm just going to click on that. For example, I can show the properties panel, or I can reset the bar position. I can also hide the bar. Now, if I want to make the bar visible, under the window menu, I will select the contextual taskbar. For this next example, I have already placed the drawing that needs to be vectorized. But the original photo needs to have more contrast, so it's easier for Illustrator to do its magic tracing it. So the first step is right here to relink the image. I'll go ahead and edit the image in Photoshop, and that prompts me to save this file as a Photoshop document, and then click to save, and now the file has been successfully saved. I'll click OK, and this will open up inside Adobe Photoshop. So for example, here I can remove its background. Under the Adjustments window, I'll choose the Levels Adjustment layer. Here, for example, I can bring in some highlights. I'll bring in some shadows. Back on the Adjustments, I'm also going to convert this to black and white. So I like what I see. There's enough contrast for Illustrator to do its magic and trace that. So under the File menu, I'll save it. I will head back to Adobe Illustrator. And then inside the Links panel, right here, I'm going to click on the chain icon to relink the artwork. All I have to do now is click on the Photoshop file that I just worked on it and replace it. So I'll click to place. And for the Photoshop input options, I'll choose Flatten Layers to a single image and then click OK. And here is the updated version. Great. First, I will ungroup that. And before I click to trace the image, up in the control bar, I will click on the drop down menu and choose just three colors. Here it is. This is the image that has been traced. And I'm going to expand this and convert the tracing object into vector paths. And that will give them the choice to recolor the artwork. So I will click on that. And remember, I traced the drawing with three colors, which means I'll go ahead and break the chain icon to color those separately. So we'll click and drag these nodes, these color nodes. and apply some color here. For example, I can select this color node and increase its brightness. Maybe this one here and so on. So this is an example of how to trace an image using the combination of Illustrator and Photoshop. Another option coming from the contextual taskbar is to mask an image. So we'll click on that and look inside the layers panel. Here's the clip group and here's the clipping path. So for example, I can bring this in from all sides. So I can mask it this way. Another thing I can do is just click and hold to get to the polygon tool and create a polygon shape. I'll release that, add a fill color of my choice, and perhaps reduce its opacity, and then click and drag the polygon under the clipping path. Now, as you can see, the polygon shape is also clipped within the photo frame together with the artwork.